Uh, today, we're going to do chapter 15. And right quick, I am going to make a new page because this stuff tends to be easier here. So the first thing I want to cover is when we have a benzene ring and we have substitu substituents on it, we have specific names that we give them. So let's say we have a substituent here. Let's call it X. The position next to it is called ortho. One further down is called meta. And one more down is called para. The way I remember these is ortho is next door. It's the two O's. And I'll highlight them so it doesn't look like an angry face. The meta position makes an M, so it's M for meta, and then the para position, it's on the south pole, so it's the other end of it, it's the other pole, P is for the pole. So that's how I remember the ortho, para, and meta positions, and we just call these O, M, and P for short. Any questions on that? I'll give it a moment if, if anyone wants to take a screenshot or write something down or ask a question. This is pretty straightforward. It's just one of those things you have to remember. But I'm going to leave that up top here and we're going to do resonance real quick. If I could draw a freaking benzene ring, that would be awesome. Okay, so I'm going to start with and alcohol as our substituent here. So is an alcohol a donating or a withdrawing group? What do y'all think? Is the alcohol, yes, I agree. It's an electron donating group because it has the lone pair, exactly. And so now I'm going to zoom in just a, a little bit here. And we bring these electrons down. We form a double bond and we have to kick these electrons over here. So let's go ahead and draw that out. So we have a double bond here, and we have our extra electrons here. So we get a minus and a plus charge. We can keep going. So we can bring the lone pair down here, and that would kick these electrons from the double bond to this position. So I'm going to scoot over a little bit. And we're going to say the OH didn't change, so it's still a double bond and a plus sign. But now we have a double bond here, and our charge is down here. We can do another resonance structure where we bring these electrons to this bond and this lone pair uh, excuse me, the uh, double bond becomes a lone pair. I'm going to scoot over a bit. And again, 
OH does not change. The only thing that changes is now we have a bond here, a bond here, and a lone pair here. Last but not least, we can bring these electrons here and take the double bond and give those electrons back to the OH. And I'm just going to move this a teeny tiny bit. And we end up, our OH is happy again. So there's no plus charge anymore. And we have one, two, three double bonds in the bending ring. So let me zoom out. And we get to see where the minus charges are going to land. And I'm just going to move this around a teeny tiny bit so there's enough space at the end to write on. All right. So does anyone have any questions about just how I did the resonance and how the electrons moved, things like that? If not, I'm going to draw your attention to where these negative charges landed. So when we had an electron donating group, our negative charge landed on the what positions? Which positions have a negative charge? So you're almost correct. Is the meta position going to get a charge? Yeah, it's ortho and para. So the meta position doesn't actually get a charge. We just reform a double bond onto that carbon. <coughs> so we can pretty much draw on this structure a delta minus, a delta minus, a delta minus on the ortho and para positions. All right. So now we are going to draw A withdrawing group. And let's say we use let's use a ketone, right? So we are going to do our resonance kind of backwards in this one. So how I like to do it is it's going to go up to the oxygen, right? Because we know resonance always wants to go up to the oxygen. And so far, the ring is fine. But we want to make a negative and a plus here. So we can pretty much say that this bond will move up here. My iPad is kind of lagging a bit. And now we have the minus charge on the oxygen. We have a double bond here. And we have a plus charge here. So now to fix the plus charge, the double bond will move to this bond. And we get we get our double bond here. We get our plus charge here. And of course, we didn't change this. 
Now, we can try and fix the plus charge again by moving the double bond one down. And we end up getting this bad boy. And our plus charge is in this corner. And then to fix that charge, the only thing we can really do is bring these electrons down and reform this double bond. So you would get our oxygen back here, a red double bond, a red double bond, and a red double bond. So, any questions about how I did the resonance here? I have a question. Um, how come there's just one arrow in this one and not two, like the one above? So, when we're moving, the, usually we have to draw resonance like this, like starting from where there's extra electrons and kind of moving around. But students get confused when we do it like backwards like this. So I kind of just did it one arrow at a time, just so we see where everything is moving. If that, it was just a choice that I made to show you guys like step by step what's happening instead of doing it like two arrows at a time. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine, thank you. Okay, cool. Alrighty, so unlike the example above, we actually have a plus charge on the ortho and para positions. So, instead of having a delta minus, we're going to have a delta plus. On our ortho and para position. So let me zoom out and I'll actually move this down like one line just so it doesn't look like one big mush. Ta da! So you can take a picture, write this down, whatever. And we're going to go into the electrophilic aromatic reaction so you can see why this stuff matters. I'm also gonna take this off because it's actually really hot in the building. Okay, so unless someone objects, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up here. Okay, so when we're talking about benzene rings versus conjugated systems, we did one, two, one, four addition reactions and we also did um, the deals all the reaction. So we know that conjugated systems are more stable than non-conjugated. However, when compared to aromatic, what's more stable? Conjugated or aromatic? Aromatic, yes, I agree. So if aromatic is more stable, that inherently means that it's less reactive. So we can say here, benzene is much less reactive than other systems. Benzene is so, 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 so stable that it does not want to react with anything, right? It's happy the way it is. It does not want to lose aromaticity. So that being said, you know that we're going to do reactions because I just told you. What do you think we can use to make benzene react? Also, um, pause. So in the past, what kind of things have we used to catalyze a reaction?
what are we thinking? Definitely, we have definitely used acids. What else have we used? It's kind of like the opposite of an acid. So to the B. Bases, yes. So we can use acids and bases as catalysts. For these reactions, we're going to say specifically acid catalysts. All right. So now I just want you guys to think about this kind of logically, right? Aromatic rings only go through substitution reactions and not addition reactions. I want you to think about what a substitution is versus what an addition is. So what, what happened in the substitution reaction? And very general terms. And you guys can unmute and answer if you would so. Oh. If you would so like. Okay, that's a really great way of saying it. You have a substituent switch. So something gets substituted for something else. That's a really great answer. Um, the other way I like to think about it is substitution equals addition plus elimination. So something that my orgo professor kept, kept like pounding in my head was, it's not a substitution, it's an addition elimination reaction. And it was so annoying, but it helps us think about reaction mechanisms a little bit differently. So a substitution reaction just means we had an addition, we added something, and then we got rid of something else to kind of balance out everything. So the difference between substitution and elimination is in, a, uh, excuse me, substitution and addition. For addition, you are adding a whole other group to everything you already had. For substitution, you're adding a group, but then you're getting rid of another one. So you kind of end with the same number of bonds and stuff like that that you had when you started. It sounds very weird the way I'm explaining it just conceptually. So let's look at an actual benzene ring, right? <laughs> so if we had benzene, and I'm going to do this on the next page as well. God, that's ugly. Okay. We have benzene. If we did an addition, and let's say we're adding Br. Don't worry about mechanism yet, we'll talk about mechanism. But if we did an addition, we would get, remember, each of these carbons have a hydrogen. And so in addition to that hydrogen, we would add a bromine right? And we would have to add something here to balance out the plus charge. If we do a substitution, boop, boop, boop. and we also do a bromine, what we end up with is we actually are going to just substitute this hydrogen for a bromine. So we're not adding anything, we're just replacing it. This might be like, we get it, Rosemary. This is so simple, blah, blah, blah. But conceptually, it's very important that you understand like what the difference between those two reactions are. So do we have any question about Actually, you know what? I'll throw a question out there. Which one of these do we think is more stable? Which of these reactions is better? Mm 
the substitution. I totally agree. And the reason is this maintains aromaticity. So here we lost aromaticity, here we maintained aromaticity. So I'll let you look at that for a second, and then we'll scroll back up to the page before. So basically the concept I want you to take away from this is benzene rings are never going to undergo addition reactions in this class. They're only ever going to undergo um, substitution reactions. So I'm going to scroll back up. Aromatic rings only undergo substitutions. True. No additions. And I don't give you enough room to explain your answer, but we don't want to lose aromaticity. <clears throat> oh. Oh. Okay. They can do addition reactions, just not in this class. I mean, in, in the, the grand scheme of chemistry, you can pretty much make things do anything with the right um, conditions. Uh, but as far as this class goes, we're going to pretend it's not possible. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to now look at um, specifically electrophilic aromatic reactions. <clears throat> Sorry, I... <clears throat> have something in my throat. All right, so um, we're going to start with any double bond here. Doesn't matter, they're all exactly the same. And we are going to, bam, attack a bromine, bam, take off the other bromine. Or you know what, before we do that, I'll give you the secret first step. So the secret first step is FeBr3, which is the acid catalyst, is actually going to use its electrons to bond to the bromine. So we get Br, Br, FeBr3. So now there's a super positive here. And this is so positive that we can go ahead and steal it. Bam. And the reason I, we're, I'm not usually going to draw this out because it's not like super necessary that you draw out that first step. Um, but what is necessary is that you know that this thing right here is our electrophile. And our benzene ring is going to be our nucleophile. So in all of these electromatic, electro, electrophilic aromatic substitutions, excuse me, benzene is always going to be the nucleophile and something else is always going to be the electrophile. So as I've drawn here, it doesn't matter really which side, excuse me, the bromine is added to because it, this is exactly the same, like everything in the benzene is the same until we add the bromine. So just for simplicity, I did it on the top. So now we're kind of, we did an addition reaction so far, right? And I told you we don't like just pure additions. And we know a substitution is always an addition followed by an elimination. So we added, and now we have to get rid of something to form a double bond. What's the most obvious thing we can get rid of to form a double bond?
what are we thinking? In this intermediate, what's the most obvious thing that we can get rid of to reform a double bond right here? Well, we are doing something with the positive charge, but we can't, like, the positive charge just means that we don't have enough electrons, so we need to remove something else. So someone said the bromine. We could definitely get rid of the bromine, however, that would be going backwards. So, like you guys are saying, we're going to remove the hydrogen. So Br minus... I'm sorry, there is a hair on me and it's driving me insane. So the Br minus is going to come in and steal the hydrogen. And we're going to use these electrons to just go ahead and reform the double bond right here. Which will give us this. So we did an addition. Elimination. So, in this first step, we actually lost aromaticity. You can't see my laser. There we go. In this first step, you lose aromaticity. In this step, you regain aromaticity. So, which step do you think is more favorable? More like uh, electric electronically favorable? This one? Number one, or this one, number two? Number two, I for sure agree. So I'm going to write this a little bit neater so I have space. So this addition step, like you guys said, is very unstable. And so we are actually going to call this the rate determining step. So... I'm going to do like a little asterisk and off to the side, I'm going to say the RDS is the rate determining step. It is the slowest step. It's the one where we lost aromaticity. And it's going to be our addition. Yeah. And someone asked the question, and it was, how was the hydrogen formed in the first place? So the hydrogen was already there. A lot of students get tripped up on that. So all of these carbons actually have hydrogens on them. We just don't draw them out. And we still do have one hydrogen here. So the thing is, once we add a bromine, here, there's still a hydrogen present. Here, there's an empty spot. So we have a plus charge here, and then we can get rid of this hydrogen to reform the double bond. Does that make a little bit more sense Explain like that? And yes, it's an uh, implied hydrogen, exactly. And let me actually move this a teeny tiny bit over because, again, I feel like I squished it in the corner. All right, so that's cool. We have the rate determining step. We talked about it. The elimination step is going to be very fast. We reform aromaticity. And that's pretty much all you need to know. It's going to be very fast, and it's going to reform aromaticity, whereas the rate determining step is very, very slow, very unstable, and it requires this acid catalyst. Any questions? Oh, I didn't. I made it its own question. I had enough space for it. So I'm just going to. There's the answer. Ah, yes, attendance. You're so right. I copied the link and I forgot to send it. Here we go.
So we have approximately 10 minutes. So, hmm. you know what? Yeah, we'll do that. So I'm going to help you guys fill this graph out and then we're gonna talk, or this, it's not really a table, the schematic out. And then next time we will actually talk more about each of these reactions. So we did a halogenation where we added a halogen to the ring. So I'm gonna zoom in. And from these choices, which set of reagents did we use for the halogenation? A, B, C, D, or E? I'll zoom in a little bit. Come on, before I start singing and dancing. Woo. Yes, it's B, because I know it's written as X is here, but it's basically saying BR2 with FEBR3. And someone said they have to go. Bye bye. Have a great day. So B is the correct answer. Right. And. The other ones are pretty straightforward once you've seen them a couple times. So we're adding an SO3H. Which of these answer choices are the only ones that has an SO in it? And not the catalyst, we're talking about the actual uh, reagent. C, exactly. So C has SO3. And so we're going to say this is a sulfonation, and we're going to say C is our reagent. Cool. All right, the next one that's kind of straightforward is the NO2. So which one of these reagents has something that looks like an NO2 in it? A, exactly. So we have HNO3. That HNO3 is going to turn into an NO2 during our reaction. And we're going to call that a nitration. I'll do it in red so we can actually see it. Okay, so between um, D and E, we see that we add a carbonyl here and we only add an R group here. So the one that only has an R group is gonna go here. The one that has an RCO group is going to go here. And we're gonna call this an acylation. And we're going to call this an alkylation. And I'll just give you this and we'll talk about it next time. The alkylation and the acylation are in a special category of reactions called Friedel. I, to be honest, have no idea how this is spelled. They're Friedel Crafts reactions. And actually, hold on. Haha, <laughs> I spelled it right. Okay. So these guys are Friedel Crafts, acylation and alkylation. And something that you can always tell is, is a Friedel Crafts reagent is if it has AlCl3. So AlCl3 is a dead giveaway.
that it is fruit crafts. The HNO3. I don't know why I did that in blue. Uh, the HNO3 is going to turn into NO2. This halogen turns into this halogen. And last but not least, this SO3 turns into SO3H. And the best part about this is all three of these have almost exactly the same reaction mechanism. So as long as you know the starting material and the final products, you will be good to go for this. So any questions about the stuff we've done so far? Aw, someone just sent me such a sweet message. You're such a sweetheart. You're very welcome. And I'm also very proud of you. Go team. Heart to heart. Okay, cool. So if there's no questions, I'm going to leave this up for one more second. And then we can go on to the next page because we do have a couple more minutes. Or we can call it a day. What do you guys think? Okay, someone said call it a day. Because I know y'all are tired. And there's only like two minutes left. And I really don't want to start another big concept. Okay. I'm all brained out. I feel you. <laughs> After these exams, I literally just went home and took a nap. I couldn't do anything. So here, let me zoom out so you can take a picture of this page if you so desire. But again, I'm so proud of you. You're so welcome. I'm so glad you guys did good. I'm so glad I didn't hear any super bad things about the exam. Um, and yeah, just have a nice day. Please relax a little bit. Reward yourself a little bit. And if you haven't, please fill in the attendance sheet. And I'll stick around for like another minute or two if anyone has questions. But I am going to stop recording. So, peace.